Let's talk for a minute now about how a codon can specify a particular amino acid. And you'll remember from earlier that the, the structure of a tRNA molecule is this classic clover leaf structure here. There were two important parts to this tRNA molecule. There was the three prime end to which an amino acid is going to be covalently attached. And then there was an anticodon sequence which helped specify which messenger RNA that this is going to bind to. Now, in the anticodon, you'll see that there's going to be a particular mRNA it binds to, but before it can do that, it needs to be uh, having an amino acid attached to its three prime end. What's the enzyme responsible for doing this? It's shown right down here, aminoacyl tRNA synthetase. That's an enzyme you need to be familiar with uh, the name and what it does. So what does aminoacyl tRNA synthetase do? It's pretty much just like its name suggests. It takes an amino acid and it attaches it to a transfer RNA molecule. So you'll see here that at the three prime end of tRNA initially, there's a free hydroxyl group, just like in any nucleic acid. There's a five prime phosphate and a three prime hydroxyl group. Now, an incoming amino acid, this could be any amino acid, we just have an R group here, this, this amino group is going to react with the hydroxyl group, and in the end, we end up with a nice covalent linkage of the, tr of the transfer RNA with the amino acid. So, aminoacyl tRNA synthetase, then, is the name of the enzyme that charges the tRNA with the amino acid. What that means for all practical purposes is now a transfer RNA molecule has an amino acid attached to it. Well, how does the amino acyl tRNA synthetase know which transfer RNAs to put the amino acid on? That depends on the anticodon. The anticodon is going to specify which amino acid gets attached to which transfer RNA. So actually, Aminoacyl tRNA synthetase, there's not just one aminoacyl tRNA synthetase enzyme in the, in the cell. There's several, several aminoacyl tRNA synthetases that attach amino acids to the proper transfer RNA. Sometimes this is called the second genetic code because if the aminoacyl tRNA synthetases don't attach the proper amino acids to the proper transfer RNA, it doesn't matter if the DNA sequence is good or mutated. You're going to get improper uh, protein sequence. So aminoacyl tRNA synthetase is a very important enzyme. And actually, as I mentioned, there's a family of these aminoacyl tRNA synthetase enzymes. So in the end, we have a charged amino a transfer RNA. It's an RNA molecule with, a, with an amino acid attached to its three prime end. How does that work then now when we come to build a, um, a protein? Well, the way it works is that the anticodon portion of the transfer RNA is going to bind complementarily and anti-parallel with the codon. So if we have a messenger RNA from its 5 to 3 prime end, we're going to see a ribosome scanning along that messenger RNA, and as that happens, you see that a transfer RNA is going to come in. The three prime end is going to correspond most closely with the five prime end. The five prime end of the tRNA is going to correspond most closely with the three prime end of the messenger RNA. Kind of hard to see because of the cloverleaf structure, but you see the point here. And what you'll see is that the anticodon reading from its three prime to five prime end is going to be complementary with the messenger RNA. So. If the codon AUC on the messenger RNA would then bind to an anticodon reading from its 5 to 3 prime GAU. Now, the codon that the, I should say the anticodon that binds to and is complementary to AUC is going to carry with it the amino acid isoleucine. Isoleucine now will be incorporated into the growing protein. What does this terminology mean right here? Isoleucine attached to the tRNA encoding isoleucine? What this means is, is that 
the tRNA that has the anticodon corresponding to isoleucine is going to be bound to the amino acid isoleucine. If ever you see that a tRNA encoding isoleucine is, say, attached to some other amino acid, where was the mutation, or where was the problem, I should say? Well, it wasn't a DNA mutation problem. It was a problem with amino acyl tRNA synthetase. If the problem is that the wrong amino acid got attached to the tRNA, then that was the problem, amino acyl tRNA synthetase.